my name's Pete Noy. I'm currently uh, with the United States Coast Guard. I serve as the uh, liaison to the uh, DHS Geospatial Management Office and, and oversee a number of geospatial projects within the Coast Guard. Um, how has knowledge of geography helped me um, meet missions within the Coast Guard? Probably that the, the bulk of information that the Coast Guard holds um, dealing with you know any type of activity, search and rescue, um, environmental response, facility or vessel inspection has some kind of geospatial component. And we're now beginning to take these terabytes of information and display it in a geospatial way so that in the past where we had to kind of look at, you know, tons of tabular reports or documents, we can now look at it, at it on a, a, a map. And that gives the, the decision makers from the admiral all the way down to the guys that are out in the field, you know, the knowledge of, of where the, the activities are, where the facilities are, where we need to concentrate the resources that we have, um, which, you know, because of budget constraints are small, we can do better with what we have out in the field. Some of the challenges um, range from dealing with, you know, you know, a workforce that is somewhat technology phobic. You know, they're used to doing things with paper charts or they're used to doing things a certain way. And, you know, when they see GIS coming in, there's this concern that we're trying to take over their world of work. Just like everyone else in the federal landscape, um, the big challenge is do more with less. So, you know, our shrinking resources, you know, our focus is on the operational side. So that's, for lack of a better term, bullets and fuel um, for the cutters and the force. So, you know, we're being made to do, you know, more with less. So we have to work smarter. We have to work in collaborative ways with other components within DHS, DOD, or the other federal partners that are in the, uh, in the government. Um, another challenge is right now, we have a number of disparate GIS viewers, um, and what that has created is what we call the swivel chair interface, where I have to go to system A, pull 30% of the information, go to system B, pull another 30%, and then try to cognitively mash that data together, you know, using what's between the ears. Um, and we're finding that doesn't work well, so we're now in the process of converging all these different systems into, like, not a single viewer, but you know, a set of defined viewers so that most of the information is displayed. Um, if I were to give one best practice to my peers, um, it probably wouldn't be just one. Um, probably the most important one is to, to have a champion in your organization, um, someone who is high up enough that they can kind of guide um, the adoption of the GIS technology and its utilization throughout, throughout the component um, and to, to have a really good working relationship with them. Um, another key takeaway that, that I kind of use every day is to keep you know, my fingers into the technology. Um, you know, in my career with the government, you know, I started you know, as, the, as the digitizer or the person who, who worked the technology and, and made the products and got them out. And then as I rose up through the organization, my involvement with the technology kind of went away and I got more into the program management and the overseeing of, of people and projects. Um, however, um, I made a decision early on that I was going to have the, the, the GIS software on my desk and every now and then, you know, I was going to kind of play around with it just so I knew what the users were facing. Um, so, yeah, definitely take advantage of the technology you have. You know, don't you know, relegate that to someone who's um, junior and think that you're on to, to just oversight. You really need to get into the, into the operation to know how your position can help those you know, implement that technology.